Aleppo, just like Damascus, is one of the oldest settlements in the world. Archaeologists believe the area has been continuously inhabited for 7,000 years. After the Western Semites, the Hittites conquered the land during the 16th century BC. Later, it was part of Neo-Babylonia, the Persian and Roman empires. Aleppo flourished due to its strategic position midway on the east and western trading route. At one point, it was a bishopric for Eastern Christianity. It fell into Arab hands in 637, and it became a major Islamic city. Its heyday was as the seat of an independent emirate under a Hamdanid prince. Aleppo is today the second largest city in Syria. Legend has it, on the citadel mound, the biblical figure, Abraham, gave milk to travelers as they moved through the region. The Arab name of the city, Halab, comes from this legend, or perhaps from the color of the white soil in the region. On that mound, in the middle of the old city, stands the symbol of Aleppo, the monumental citadel, one of the world's oldest and largest castles. It was made part of the World Heritage List in 1988. Use of the Citadel Hill dates back to the middle of the third millennium BC, when it was used for defense and sacred rituals. Over the following centuries, it was occupied by Seleucids, Greeks, Byzantines, and Romans. During the Crusades, many famous crusaders were imprisoned here. The Turkish Nur ad-Din rebuilt Aleppo city walls. Saladin's son, al-Zahir al-Khazi, ordered reconstruction and changes to the castle in the 13th century. The citadel was damaged by the Mongol invasion, then rebuilt in the 15th century by the Mamluk governor of Aleppo, Prince Jakam. During this reconstruction, two new towers were added to the northern and southern slopes of the citadel, and the Mamluk palace was also built. A Venetian traveler mentions some 2,000 people living in the citadel in 1556. In the Ottoman period, the military role of the citadel diminished, although it was still used as barracks. Civilians also lived in the fortress until an earthquake in 1822, when it was seriously damaged. During the French mandate, soldiers were stationed in the citadel. Extensive archaeological excavations and restoration work began in the 1930s. The Mamluk throne hall was rebuilt and the amphitheater completely reconstructed. The citadel is built partly on the remains of ancient civilizations and partly on a natural mound. Surrounded by a substantial moat, the man-made mound has a slope of 48 degrees, making it hard to climb. The fortress plan is an ellipse, almost a quarter of a mile long. It is ringed by a wall over 30 feet thick in many places. The huge stone balls laid at the foot of the towers were usually used in catapults, but were effective even when simply rolled down the hill. In the upper palace are several buildings with different functions, such as the 19th century barracks and the two mosques. The so-called Little Mosque, or Mosque of Abraham, was built in the 1100s. The Big Mosque, built in 1214, stood on the highest point of the citadel. Through another set of corridors is a bath, the Islamic-style hammam in the middle of the citadel. Much of the fortress is underground, not only the dungeons. The large towers on the northern and southern sides of the citadel were reached through secret underground passages and corridors. The throne hall on the first hall of the double entrance tower is covered with a ceiling of nine domes, supported by four columns. The originally flat ceiling was replaced by the nine domes by the last Mamluk Sultan. To make the air comfortable, a special wall wetting device was used so the caliphs, emirs, pashas and generals leading the country could meet under ideal conditions. As it has for thousands of years, the town of Aleppo below the citadel still trades. 
Now the smallest shop or business can cool and dampen its air the way only a small elite in the castle up on the hill could six or seven centuries ago.